This is a Canada Foundation for Innovation podcast. Hello, and welcome to 10,000 Ways. This is a podcast about curious researchers, leading edge science, and the joys of discovery. I'm Leila Soleimani, Associate Professor in Engineering Physics in School of Biomedical Engineering at McMaster. Um, my research is focused on biosensors for coronary care and rapid diagnostics. Our podcast gets its name from Thomas Edison, who said, I have not failed. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. I work on rapid diagnostics, so we work on things that look like the glucose monitor, but um, but it can do a lot more. It's a reader that you can use multiple times with um, with re- with disposable um, cartridges. Leila Soleimani's soft voice reveals her natural humility, but don't be fooled; her research speaks loudly. Early in her career, she focused on biosensors. The first wearable, non-invasive biosensor was brought to market in 2000. The Gluco Watch was designed to help people with diabetes evaluate their blood sugar or glucose levels. Biosensors have evolved considerably since that time, and Layla now finds herself at the forefront of this research. You know, people now have an understanding of the importance of rapid tests, as you know, everybody uh, has used um, you know a rapid COVID test. But there's a lot more you can do with these tests, right? You can monitor cancer, cardiovascular diseases. So you can create wearable sensors, right? Uh, wearable patches that can look at markers of interest um, and and monitor people's health. Um, so, say you know, after exercising, uh, certain levels of certain biomolecules in your body change very quickly. So you can't really um, study that with our current tools. I mean, it's it's possible, but it's difficult to, to study that. Um, but these these new tools, you know, these these patches that, that monitor sweat, they could be patches that actually go and penetrate your skin by, you know, less than a minute, millimeter and look at interstitial fluid. And so we've built a lot of these tools in vitro, so outside the body. And and we we have made some materials that we think will work really well with those those non-invasive samples in the body. Layla has mentioned a few terms which might be unfamiliar. For example, interstitial fluid surrounds the cell made up of water, sugars, and a bunch of other stuff. This is where you will find biomarkers. A biomarker is a sign of a normal or abnormal process or of a condition or disease. Off the top, Layla also talked about COVID and rapid tests. Currently, she's trying to develop a new type of bacteria identifying rapid test for urinary tract infections. Elderly people are particularly prone to these type of infections, and what you may not know is that this type of infection can also contribute to dementia. And I think you'll agree, this isn't something we want to see in our loved ones. So if you want to detect urinary tract infection, normally you have to wait, you know, hours for the results to come back because you have to grow the bacteria. But a rapid test allows us to do this um, in minutes. Uh, We're using things that look like the glucose sensor, so they're electrical. We use chips, um, and these are, you know, computer chips, but for for biological applications, let's say. Um, So we use these chips to do our measurements. So all the signals that I talked about, whether it's a a sensor that's outside the body, it interfaces with the body, it's a credit card size reader. Layla's love for everything engineered and minuscule and nano was not attributable to a single flick of the inspirational switch at a take-your-kids-to-work day or one unique and influential high school mentor. It was rather, as is fitting an engineer, a very logical path where the practical generated the passion. 
I think it came for me the, in the opposite order. I first became an engineer, then I noticed that I liked it、um, because I think everybody I know was it was an engineer around me.、Um, so I decided to to be an engineer、uh, for that reason, but also because I, I was good at math and and physics, and it seemed like a natural fit. If you like, you know, math and physics, then then you go to you know. Mechanical or electrical engineering, and then once I, I, you know, I, I did my bachelor's degree. I realized that、um, I really like the possibilities that that is in front of me. I guess I was the first female、uh, professor in my department,、uh, and it, until very recently, engineering. Was and has been a male-dominated profession,、uh, but th- I think there's also opportunities and now、um, uh, to 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 change that perception and to communicate the message that engineering is for everyone. Behind every researcher success story, there's usually a mentor. It's not difficult to tell why Layla selected her particular PhD mentor. This mentor works out of the University of Toronto. She's been recognized as one of Canada's top 40 under 40. She's also been recognized as a top 100 innovator by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Review, and she is the holder of a modest 50 patents. I, I've had great mentors. I, I'll talk about one, also a female mentor, Professor Shayna Kelly, that that really helped me reach my 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 goals during my my PhD, and and it was、um, it was really inspiring because. You know, she she also had she had a great career. She did it all. She you know she she was a professor. She was a great researcher. She still is, and she's not going anywhere. And she she started a company、uh, at multiple companies、uh, now that、uh, that were focused on、um, translating some of these rapid diagnostics、um, to the market.、Uh, And、um, and she she did all that, and she was a she she was a new mom at the time, and、uh, and I think that that was、um, just kind of having that mentor and that experience firsthand to see you know somebody who's who's doing it all,、um, even though it sounds cliche, but but it, it really. Helps me every day to try to do something impactful,、um, you know, and and try to to also have、um, uh, you know have have a family life as well. While Layla remarks that Shayna seems to be doing it all, Layla isn't exactly sitting around at the lab bench and waiting for eureka moments. For example. Layla and her colleagues from McMaster University have just announced the development of a new form of rapid test to detect infections in farm animals, responding to the rising threat of dangerous outbreaks, particularly in pigs. This nanotechnology just requires a small sample of pig's spit or saliva to detect the chemical markers for infection. For real appreciation of this discovery, just consider your favorite summertime rib fest. Without the ribs, or more seriously, the potential impact of disease on 7,600 Canadian pork farmers. The discovery of this rapid test only touches on Layla's innovative mindset. Consider the discovery of a product called Repel Wrap. Repel Wrap is super hydrophobic. Hydro meaning water, and phobic meaning aversion. It's sort of like raindrops beating, and then rolling off the leaves of a plant. It's interesting because when you asked me what I do, I didn't even talk about repel wrap,、um, and I talked about you know most of the diagnostic work we 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 do. Although repel wrap has has you know has has made huge、uh, headlines. So repel wrap is a plastic wrap that repels. Uh, contamination. So it could be liquid contaminations, or it could be pathogenic com- contamination, like bacteria or viruses. We have started a company, and the first product that it's going to be to appear as is is a coating for what we call high-touch surfaces. So surfaces that、um, that you know. 
all throughout a day, lots of people will touch it uh, and can, can, can be a source of transmission of infectious diseases, for example. A future products um, are, you know, medical tubing, medical devices that need to stay clean um, uh, inside the body or, or even outside the body. One of the problems seen in earlier iterations of biosensors was that while they captured the molecules they were targeting, they also captured non-targeted proteins. And this gummed up the minuscule sensor points. To improve the efficiency, the researchers needed to find something to fight these sticky proteins they dubbed biofouling. Their solution, repel wrap, was the result of a collective effort. Layla worked with researchers like Tohid Didar, who has been a trusted collaborator for many, many years. Ted Sargent, a nanotech prof out of the University of Toronto, has provided consistent encouragement and motivation. But equally important to Layla are the ongoing contributions made by her McMaster student protégés, who consistently provide equal parts perspiration and inspiration. A lot of it has to do for me working with with talented students. You know, they they come up with you know remarkable ideas, and um, and the nice thing about this job is that we can actually do it, and we don't have to really worry about um, whether this fits. Um, go outside the box. We don't. It doesn't have to totally make sense in the beginning, right? We, we can explore things, we can experiment with things, we can discover things uh, without knowing exactly where this is fitting, right? It doesn't have to be in a company product line, you know, from the, from the beginning. We, we have the ability to explore and be creative and, and kind of uh, follow um, follow our our, um, our curiosities and to to really focus on the creative aspect of engineering more so than than kind of <laughs> the perception that is you know that is um, a lot of you know a lot of the perception that goes with like building and and uh, and assembling things it's it's the way more the more i see it it's, it's as a design and and designing things and creating things so um every scientist um to really make make it make a change um has to to think outside the box at some point and say okay we want to go from page point A to B, we want to achieve this. This is the way that everybody else is doing it. But, you know, we really need a breakthrough in order to do that faster, do that, you know, cheaper, do that, you know, improve stability, all of those things, you know, you need to, to just sometimes break out of how everybody else does it and just find a new creative way. Our podcast, 10,000 Ways, takes its name from a quote or concept attributed to prolific American inventor Thomas Edison. He may have been talking about light bulbs or maybe batteries. While the exact area of research may be open to speculation, what is not open to discussion are his continued efforts to persevere and experiment long after the time when others may have considered their efforts a failure. In the scientific community, you get a lot of rejection. You wake up with a rejection letter in your inbox every day from a journal, from a grant, from an award. If you look in the shorter term when in, at, at your career, you have these, these periods of failure and success and then failure and then success. So I, I try to remember that, that these things are cyclical, right? Like you just kind of have to push through this cycle of failure to get through what's called success. But I think when you look over a longer year, a longer a term, right, a, a decade or so looking back, those, you know, on average, you feel like the, the average of that failure success is not zero, right? It's the average is, is above zero. You, you, you are making important contributions and, and in overall, you, you are successful. But I, I think it's hard to deal with those periods of failure. And, um, 
And I've had a lot of great mentors that, you know, I've, I've talked to and said, you know, I, I just cannot get this thing to work. I just cannot get this research to, to, to fund. I cannot get this funded. And, you know, they've always been um, just there to remind me of, of their own kind of de- periods of, of failure. And, and it's always remind me that, that, you know, these people are my, my inspiration, my mentors. If, if they've gone through these and, you know, they're overall so successful, then, you know, you, you just kind of have to get through this. At some point in time, we may ask ourselves, how do I want to be remembered? What do I want to leave behind? These can be challenging questions, but they are questions with a limitless number of very personal possibilities. One of Layla's wishes starts with peer recognition. As scientists, and I can tell you, you know, we, we write a lot of papers and that's great. Um, we we want to publish and we want to publish great papers and we want people to read them. And we do that. Uh, but I think one thing that I... I really want to happen uh, before, you know, to, a legacy is for me to be able to point to something, a product. It's a reality. You can point to it and say, oh, you know, I, I worked that. I developed that. It's a product that everybody knows right now. Right. So I'm hoping that that there, 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 there would be, you know, a commercial product that I could say, OK, this is something I developed. When Repel Rap was first published and generated news, um, I, I never had this where people from so many different sectors were writing to me and wanting to buy this, right? I mean, we were at a proof of concept stage and people were, you know, they, they wanted from the hospitality sectors, from transportation, farmers, um, you name it, hospitals, they were, they were messaging me and said, you know, we want to buy this thing. How do we get our hands on this? And so that's where I knew that, you know, there's, there's something there that, that, that people want. And, and, you know, maybe this is it, maybe this is that product that I, I, I would want um, uh, to, to kind of leave behind as a legacy. Many years ago, there was a group of authors who called themselves the Inklings. Perhaps you've heard of some of them, J.R.R. Tolkien, or maybe C.S. Lewis. What made this group unique was that they would gather once a week, read some of their new works, and then open themselves up to a group review. It turns out, Lord of the Rings was not a singular effort created by one introvert in isolation. It was a group effort, a sum effort greater than an individual part. Layla has also adopted this philosophy of augmented collaboration. I think it's something that's not necessarily come coming easy to me, but it's something that I've learned um, to do over the past few years, and and that's. That's to collaborate effectively with with other scientists. I think it took me a while to learn that to to find people that that we can work together, um, you know, uh, creatively. We have complementary expertise, and you know, when we get together, one plus one becomes more than two, right? It, it, you know, just the sum of our efforts is is more than the actual sum. So I think that's something that I've. Um, that, that I've learned and I think to surround myself with you know great collaborators to to learn to to gain their respect to respect them and and for us to work on on things that we we think it's fun to do but it's also really important uh, and I think that's that's helped me a lot over the past few years to 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 do you know great research and 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 try to 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 be um, to stand out. I guess success. What does success mean for you? Here's what would work for Layla. It's been hard for me to to think um, how do I define my own success versus other people defining my success and um and right now i think the way i see it is is um 
I'm as successful as my students are. So, um, so I really measure my success based on their success. If if I'm training students who are, you know, becoming professors, starting their own lab um, labs, uh, you know, I have students who who um, who you know biotech companies are fighting over to hire them. You know, they they're doing really impactful stuff. Uh, some are becoming entrepreneurs. I think I, I measure my success based on, you know, how, how, how you know, if, I, if I'm taking part in, it, you know, I, I feel like if I've done a good job training them, um, th- this is really um, what I could be proud of um, um, in, in my career. Layla's contribution to training young researchers is not all she has to be proud of. The discoveries she's made and products she's helped develop will have a legacy of their own. In 2020, Repel Rap beat out more than 700 entries from over 60 countries to win the Create the Future Design Contest, sponsored by Tech Briefs magazine. Repel Rap has been dubbed Pathogenic Teflon. Its surface texture mimics, to a great extent, that of the lotus leaf. But it is more than just super hydrophobic, it is almost everything phobic. Add some ripples to the wrap, along with a little chemistry on top, and the end result is that almost nothing sticks. What does stick is the importance of collaboration. J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, and 17 of their peers gathered weekly for decades to help create literary works that were greater than the sum of the parts. Layla and her collaborators also gather, and the ideas they generate, from keeping pigs healthy to pathogenic Teflon, will continue to make an impact. In closing, Joseph Henry was an American physicist. In one simple quote, he summarizes the power of persistence, collaboration, and opportunities found in chance occurrence. This is what he said. The seeds of great discovery are constantly floating around, but they only take root in the minds of those well prepared to receive them. Thousand Ways is produced in the studios of the Canada Foundation for Innovation. The CFI is a non-profit corporation that invests in research infrastructure at Canadian universities, colleges, research hospitals, and non-profit research institutions. 2022 is our 25th anniversary, and over the course of the last 25 years, we've funded over 12,000 projects and contributed more than $9 billion dollars in infrastructure funding. If you're curious to learn more about the CFI, then please visit innovation.ca. That's I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N dot C-A. My name is Greg Pillsworth. We'll let the music play out. And thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye. 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 B